helpful. Cool, so we knocked that out. Yeah, question? Uh, for the other ones in the comment section, for yeah. the explanation, are we allowed just to like write the rule, or do you want us to say? Well, let's, uh, I don't know, let's do one. Clause. Which one do you want to do? Uh, 27. 27. Oh, 27 is awesome, too. Yes, this is where, okay, now this is, this is good. I'm glad you asked about this. Okay, the boy in the front row is six years old. Uh, first of all, the boy in the front row, can that stand alone? No. Is, the boy in the front row is, no. But let's look at the structure of this sentence. What's the action in that sentence? Is. is. It seems to be is. <coughs> What's the object? What's receiving the is? What What is that state of being applied to? Six years old. Yeah, six years old. That's the object. What's the subject? Who is being six years old? Right, here's the thing. Could be the boy, or it could be the boy in the front row. We have to decide, is in the front row necessary to understand which boy we're talking about? Okay, and we can, you know, this is a sentence without any context. So we could imagine a situation where you have, say you got a great big auditorium, and here's a bunch of rows, right? And here in the front row, there's a boy. Now imagine, there's no one else in the auditorium. The auditorium is empty except for that one happy six-year-old. Okay. Is this necessary information to know which specific boy we're talking about if it's an empty auditorium? No, because there's only one of them. We can just say the boy. What if the auditorium is full? It's jam-packed. Every seat is full. Except it's full of adults except for this one little boy. Everyone else is like in their 80s. Is this necessary to understand who we're talking about? Probably not. Probably not, because a six-year-old is pretty distinct from an 80-year-old. What if the auditorium is full of 80-year-old women? Not only is the six-year-old the only person under 80 in the auditorium, but also they're the only male in the auditorium. Then is this at all necessary to understand who we're talking about? No. So here's the thing. You have to decide. Is that restrictive information or not? Does that restrict, does that limit, does that define exactly who or what we're talking about? If so, it can't have commas. If this entire phrase is necessary in order to clearly define what we're talking about, then there can't be any commas in that sentence because you don't want someone to skip over that. <coughs> Otherwise, they won't know what you're talking about. Okay? So if you decide in the front row is restrictive information, it restricts, it defines exactly what we're talking about and is necessary information because otherwise we don't know which subject we're talking about, then no commas. However, if you decide, no, that's <coughs> a non-restrictive clause, AKA extra info. If I just say the boy is six years old, my reader will know who I'm talking about. In that case, you have to have commas on both sides of it. And here's what the commas do. It tells the reader, this is extra information. If you want, you can just skip ahead to the next comma and start reading clear, closely again there helps people scale. Okay. So it depends. And so I, I get your, you know, how do you define that? 
You could just, like, if you decided that it was non restrictive. You just write that. Just put it in the commas and say non restrictive. Or you could say non restrictive clause. Or you could say correct restrictive clause. Or you could say correct, it's the, you know, the boy in the front row is the whole subject. Or, you know, there's a lot of ways that you can indicate that you know what's going on. And so some of these grammar worksheet questions can have multiple correct answers. What I'm interested in is some indication that you know what you're doing. 